Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to show you how to edit a file in Lightroom and export it for the highest quality on Instagram. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is tweak my white balance back and forth. It looks pretty good right now, but I just want to see if maybe I can make it a little bit better. So if you've watched any of my tutorials in the past, you'll know I like to drag my temperature slider all the way from left to right and just make it as yellow and blue as possible and then go back to the middle and try to find a balance I want. And I think I want this to have a little more of a warm tone, so I'm going to actually go a little more yellow than I normally would, just because I'm trying to put those colors in. So now let's do the same for our tint. And I think that might be a little too much magenta. I, I like the extra bit of warmth, but I think that's a little too far. So instead of 14, let's try something more like 10. Okay, I think that looks good. I think that's a nice amount of warmth. Okay, so now I'm going to check my exposure and see if maybe I want to drop it down or brighten it up a little. And I think it looks a little bit better with a little extra exposure. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and play with my highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. Drop these highlights because it seems to be getting a little too bright on the face and I don't want it to be overpoweringly bright. Let's raise the shadows a little. Uh, I don't think I want to mess with my whites at all actually. I'm just going to double tap on it to reset it. Drop the blacks a little. Okay, and let's toggle the before and after so far. All right, I'm really liking the way this is looking so far. So let's go down to our tone curve and play with this a little bit. Actually, I don't think I like that highlight increase. Raise that up a little. Uh, I don't want the shadow too much on her face, so that's why I'm raising that up. I do like dropping the actual shadows just a tiny bit to kind of get that. So let's go back here and look at the difference that this has made so far. Helped add a bit of contrast and color by using the curves here. Okay, and let's go adjust our HSL now. See if there's any color changes we want to make. I think I want to drop that just a little bit to kind of make that red pop a bit more. Uh, I think I want to raise my orange up just a little. Trying to introduce a little more golden tones to this. I think yellows are good where they're at. So let's actually just go ahead and undo that. Wow, it does not want to go back in my history. Uh, I could control Z, but. And I accidentally grabbed yellow again. I did like what it was doing with the greens in the back, but I'm going to see if I can actually catch those with this. I want the greens to pop a bit more. Say somewhere around 40 is good. And it doesn't seem that like there's much purple or magenta in the image. Okay, so let's see what we did with our uh, HSL adjustments real quick. Actually, that's... So really, it didn't make too much of a difference. It's very subtle, uh, but you'll see like up in the collar here. It's just very, very slight changes. Uh, the green and the red on the little bit of the cuff of the coat there have changed. 
Okay, so let's do a toggle of our before and after overall with backslash. And there's where we started. That's where we're at now. All right, so we're not done yet because we're going to go ahead and play with the saturation a bit too. Uh, like I said, I want to get those greens to pop a bit more, so I'm going to go ahead and increase the saturation for those. Same with the yellow, I want some warmth. Let's turn the brightness down on the red just a little bit. Uh, maybe down a little in orange as well. Okay, and... Yeah, I think it looks good with decreasing it a bit on greens as well. Okay, so now that we got our HSL sorted out, what we can do is we can add a little bit of split toning to actually put some more color into the image. And typically what I like to do is do opposite ends of the color spectrum. So if I want like some yellows in my highlights, I'll do some blues in my shadows. I'm gonna actually go ahead and crank these all the way up just for demonstration purposes here, because I'm gonna adjust my balance now and figure out where I actually want these to apply and where I want my blend. I think somewhere about like 20 looks good. Okay, so now let's go ahead and drop the saturation. Down to like three each. And let's go ahead and check that. And it's not adding as much as I would like it to, so I'm going to increase my saturation to something like 5. Check it again. And it's still really not showing very much, so let's go ahead and do like 10. There, now we're starting to actually get some extra yellow and blue in the image that we're actually visibly able to see. Uh, normally I don't have to go that high, but for this image it actually needed a bit more to actually show. Um, so let's go ahead and go down here and see if we want to enable lens corrections or not. Yeah, it makes a little bit of a difference, but I, I think I, I usually like a bit of a vignette, so I think I'll leave it. If anything, what I'll do is I'll actually turn on profile corrections and then I'll just turn vignetting all the way down. Uh, so that way it fixes any distortion, but it doesn't actually uh, affect my natural vignette of the lens. And usually when I edit in Lightroom, I like to add a little bit of grain to the image. Something like 10. Uh, just enough to kind of give it that organic film kind of look. Okay, so now that we got all this set up and we have our uh, colors and balance everything done, I want to add a bit of clarity to make the highlights pop and to add a bit of contrast. And you'll see it just kind of gives it a nice little kick. And then let's go ahead and play with our vibrance a little, see if we want to increase that a little bit. I think that looks good at like 10. And typically I like to stay away from saturation because I find it affects skin tones too much where vibrance tends to uh, be a little more natural. All right, so now that we actually got all of our editing and coloring done, let's go ahead and adjust our crop because Instagram likes the 4x5 or 8x10 crop. Let's go ahead and bring up this tool. And then let's go to Aspect and select 4x5. So now what we want to do is kind of drag this around and figure out where we want it to be positioned and... Uh, the thing I like to keep in mind is where the bottom of my frame is uh, and where the top of my frame is. And that, that sounds pretty simple, right? But what it actually is is the fact that on Instagram, not only do you have to worry about your 8x10 crop, but you also have to worry about what it's going to look like as a square crop when you are actually looking at your feed. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure there's enough headroom for when the square crop kicks in that it's going to show a decent part of the image. So in my estimation, it should be right around the bottom half of her foot there and then right along the top of her head. Maybe it'll cut in a little bit on the hair. Maybe it'll cut a little bit on the toes. But for the most part, it'll look similar to how I want it to look. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done now. And that's going to finalize that crop. So now comes the part where we save it out for the best quality on Instagram. Because I find if you don't resize your image and if you don't apply a little bit of sharpening to it, it's not going to look good on Instagram. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go down to our bar here and we're going to right click on the photo we just edited. We're going to export and then export again. And if you have this setup, you can do export as previous or whatever like that. But typically I wouldn't bother too much. So now that we're in this menu, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and scroll down. And the reason why we want to scroll down is we're going to get down to where it says file settings. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that's on JPEG. And then we want to set our quality all the way up to 100. And we want to make our color space set to sRGB. If you have it set to Adobe RGB or Profoto RGB, the colors won't look right when you actually go to upload to Instagram. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go to image sizing. And then we want to hit resize to fit, make sure that's checked. And I like to just go and select short edge and I prefer 2160 for pixels. And if you want to actually size it exactly to what Instagram's dimensions are, you're going to want to go to 1080. The thing about doing that, though, is I find for other platforms, 2160 tends to work the best if you upload to Facebook or 500px or Flickr or any of that, which actually makes the short edge a full 4K screen resolution, which future proofs your images. So now that we have that, we're going to have our resolution to 40. Uh, you can set it to 300 if you plan on printing it, but I mean, you'd probably not want to resize if you're going to print. So I wouldn't really care too much about that. I think it's 240 by default. And now we're going to go down to where it says output sharpening. And you want to have that checked. So make sure that's checked. And then we're going to select screen. And typically I do standard or high. If you want your details to really pop out on Instagram, you're probably going to want to go high. But I'm probably just going to do standard. And then we check our metadata if we want to do anything like that. Watermark. If you want to put a watermark on it, you can. Typically I don't recommend watermarks. Uh, I find they actually kind of make the images look worse or perform worse on Instagram. And then we're going to go ahead and click export. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It uh, exports it. It's nice and resized and good for Instagram. It's sharpened up. If I go ahead and open it up real fast, I'll uh, quick switch screens here. Okay, so I went ahead and opened this up on an image viewer. And as you can see, all the details are really sharp and nice and crisp. And the reason why is because not only did we resize the image down and resample, we also sharpened additionally for screen. So it's going to definitely improve your overall image quality when you're uploading to Instagram. I hope this is able to help you guys today. If it was, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.